Hello and welcome to Open Logic. This is System Verilog in 5 minutes, and in this video, we'll look into attributes of class members. And this is a retro arcade game where there's a spaceship trying to avoid incoming meteor. If it crashes, its life would be reduced until all lives are spent. We can model the spaceship with a class called Sea Fighter. It can contain a number life, it is initialized to 3. It can have a function called crash, in which every time it is caught, life would decrement, and if life decrements to zero, a message is printed to indicate game over. We can test this class by instantiating it inside the module. We can call its function crash, and then we can display its life. Well, the code works fine, but there is a loophole. We can modify the member life as we wish. After we call crash, we can revert life back to 3. Even better, we can set life to a huge number. We can say this is a cheat capability, but if we wish to impose a fair game, we can change the attribute of the member life by adding the keyword local. With that, users can no longer access the member's life. If we need to read the life value, we can create a function to get it, practically making the local member read only. And this is the concept of encapsulation where in the class there will be member variables or functions which we don't want to expose to users. Variables and functions which are not marked by local are generally public and can be accessed by users. Since we are talking about encapsulation, let's talk about another concept, abstraction. Let's say we have three extra functions, shoot, teleport, and shield. Based on the type of a fighter, it can choose one of these capability and only one. For example, if it chooses to have teleport capability, it should not be able to call shoot or shield. Abstraction is an ability where we expose only teleport function and not shoot and shield function even though they are public. This can be achieved by using the syntax interface class, but in my opinion, I don't think it's commonly used and I'll skip it in this video. In short, Encapsulation dictates what a user should access or should not access from a class. For the members accessible by users, they can be further divided into different use cases. And abstraction is an ability to expose those members which are related to a particular use case. Now let's move to another concept. This is a dummy class and there are multiple handles. How can we tell how many times the class is instantiated? One way is to use a counter. Every time we call the new function, we also increment the counter. But this step is tedious and can be easily forgotten. It would be easier if the counter exists in the class and every time the new function is called, the counter is incremented automatically. And this is the same code with the counter inside the class and there's a new function to increment the counter when it is called. However, this does not work because every instance has its own counter. There are three instances and therefore three separate members count. At the end, every member count is one respectively. Now, if we use the keyword static, it makes the member count being shared by all instances. There are three instances here and therefore three members i, but there is only one member count. Every time a handle is instantiated, the member count would increment. And this is a similar example but we added a new static bit, debug. If we set debug to 1, it enables a display message to all instances of this class. However, before we instantiate cn0, we cannot use cn0.debug. But debug as a static variable, it does not belong to any instance, it belongs to the class. And therefore, we can use this syntax to access the variable from the class and not from the instances. Imagine that we have two classes, C number and C string, each has one static member count. These two members count are not related. If we instantiate the classes, the count here only affects C number instances and the count here only affects C string instances. Now, one more syntax before we go. This is a simple class. Everything works fine. However, there is a philosophical question. Can we change the argument name to id? The answer is yes, we can. But if we do that, how do we differentiate between this id and that id? The answer is literally this. By using the keyword this, this id refers to the class member id, and this id refers to the function argument id. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. 